Enter the Flame Flash. Flameflash.net podcast episode 20 is live, up and running, and hopefully my volume's okay. I have a lot of content this week, in fact so much so that it filled my usual notebook page of notes. I have a tiny notebook, by the way, so don't be scared. So we'll get started. The Raptor Report. First off, you can find me on raptor.com. R-A-P-T-R dot com. As, you guessed it, Flame Flash. I'm also out there on the Twitterverse as, well, Flame Flash. PSN as Flame Flash. And, well, there's always flameflash.net too. Anyway, Golden Axe. Yes, Golden Axe. This classic Sega brawler. It came to the PSN a while back as a free PlayStation Plus download. I finally got around to playing it with the oldest son, and we had some fun killing off Death Adder. I think that's what the last guy's name is. And getting some PlayStation Network trophies. Always have to go for those trophies when they're nice and easy, especially like that those. Kind of like um, Altered Beast was super easy to get most of the trophies in there so was this one the only tough one that we almost got but didn't is the don't use any continues gold trophy not sure if I'm gonna go back to it or not X-Men the arcade game on the PlayStation Network oddly I logged in tried it out again just have some fun and see if I couldn't get lucky and find a game with six people in it to unlock one of the particular trophies didn't found one with three people me being the third and while one guy did drop out did manage to go all the way to Magneto and off him there is a trophy for offing Magneto with all of the characters through separate playthroughs of course so that's one step tro closer to that particular trophy at least Magic the Gathering, Duels of the Planeswalker, 2012. A new expansion pack has recently come out for this. I think I've mentioned that before. I have not picked it up yet. I'm looking forward to picking it up. I have a Best Buy gift card that is burning a hole in my wallet. Or was that the really great chili the wife made the other night? No, it's the gift card. No reaction. Oh, well. I think she's trying to ignore me. But I'm looking forward to picking up a PSN card and a uh, early Christmas gift for the oldest son. Already have that in mind, though I'm not going to say it here. And then I'll be able to go out and pick up that expansion pack. I do not put my credit card on the PlayStation Network, the Xbox Store, or pretty much anywhere else. Even iTunes, I go and buy uh, gift cards when I actually want to get something there. It keeps you within a budget and your credit card information isn't floating around. The less it's floating around, the better. Yes, some sites, it's sometimes worthy to do it if you order from them enough, but a one or two minute inconvenience, quote unquote, to put yourself at risk and your family at risk, your finances at risk, is worth it. Do it. Eventually I need a new headset. My earpieces are around my cheeks. Oh well. Comics Zone. I never played this game before. Another one of those freebies from the PlayStation Network, PlayStation Plus program. And I just never tried it before. It's from Sega. It was on the Genesis. So, of course, I never tried it before. I didn't own a Genesis. Really interesting game. Artist sucked into the comic book. It's a side-scroller brawler. Two-dimensional brawler. So think classic Street Fighter, where you're facing your opponent and 
punching and kicking and jumping using items though I failed miserably at that and used dynamite on myself oops yeah I'm a noob at that game got to the end of the first page it's harder than I was expecting but it was a decent challenge and actually felt like it held up through the test of time a little bit certainly wouldn't expect the weird control style uh, default for the PlayStation is L1 item 1 R2 or R1 item 3 and triangle for item 2 X square and circle are used for more action oriented moves but that was just awkward I went in to you know consider my other options and you really don't have good other options this game was definitely made with the Genesis in mind of having three button layout I would assume um, prior to the Genesis controllers later evolving to have six buttons that you would hit that handy dandy little start I think it was to switch between the item buttons and the regular attack buttons probably made for hitting buttons rather crazy I remember playing Street Fighter at a friend's house one time back in the day and having to hit that gray start button I think it was off to the right if I wanted to switch between punches and kicks drove me nuts one reason I didn't ever uh, got a Genesis St uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance on the Xbox 360 the uh, toddler put this one in he loves his superhero fix didn't really get anywhere um, wasn't quite sure how to walk around the fire it seems so he did what you don't do in World of Warcraft and stood in the fire and he stood in the fire and he should have been playing the human torch because at least that wouldn't have killed off his characters then so that's why that one shows up on the Raptor Report. He did find it mildly amusing as they uh, did their death throws animations and whatnot. Because he, more than likely, just not understanding the controls, kept pushing one direction on the thumbstick. He's a toddler. What do you expect? Last but not least, yes, it's a short Raptor Report this week because it's Brewfest, World of Warcraft, Brewfest. I am very thankful to my wife who has assisted me in getting all of my tokens that I would like or want. And so I have been nicely swimming in my Brewfest tokens for all of them. I plan on getting Brew of the Month Club. It's one of the more expensive items on the docket. And also work towards some of my other characters getting the uh, Brewmaster title. So eventually, hopefully, they'll all have it. The son, interestingly enough, the oldest, his 75 warrior, all he needs to do is kill the holiday boss, which, of course, he can't do at 75. So hopefully next year, assuming Mists of Pandoria isn't out, or whatever the new expansion pack isn't out by then, we'll be level capped on that pair and he'll have a chance to finally get Brew brewmaster title for his uh, warrior which will be really cool to have earned that one he has the noble which doesn't require any instancing is actually one of the easiest titles to get for your lower level tunes so if you have a lower level tune you want a title for that tune go for the noble next easter it's possible. All you have to worry about is getting to Angoro Crater, really. And with the right friends, perhaps owning a motorcycle or rocket, it's much easier than it used to be. Interesting news, and we have a lot of it this week. I don't know why we have so much of it, but we have a lot. Since I started with World or ended with World of Warcraft on one side, I'm going to start with it on another. Transmogrification is 
crazy expensive right now on the public test realms. I haven't been in there myself yet, but we're talking 1,000 gold simply to unlock the service. And then another 8,000 gold if you want to deposit 80 items, which is the maximum of the feature, into the system. 8,000 gold. Save your gold, folks, for now. If you remember back when dual spec was originally announced and introduced, it was a thousand gold there too. Now it's around ten to a hundred. It will drop, or should hopefully drop. Void storage is for vanity items though. Those items you just don't want to part with, but have no real use to you in game anymore. Like I have the a great little druidic moon circlet, which I think came out of Ulduar in Wrath, or an Ulduar token in Wrath. And I love that thing. I am very tempted to toss it in there and transmogrify it to some of my other rather ugly helms. But I'm not going to do it for 1,100 gold plus whatever the transmogrification fee is. I'm a cheapskate, even in World of Warcraft, so we'll wait and see on that one. I might pick it up on one or two characters, but they're going to be the close to level max characters, the characters with more history. The younger characters, the characters that have been more storages, and their own type of void storage, and just haven't grown as much with me, those characters aren't getting it until it gets cheaper. We'll just have to wait and see how much I'm tempted to use it. The land Zandalari Heroics are going to be in 4.3 merged with the rest of the Heroics. Uh, this doesn't really actually interest myself or the wife much because we haven't been running instances this expansion. Really strange. Don't know why. Probably because until very recently I haven't gotten used to Druid healing until very recently, thanks to Corin Dyer Brew of the Brew Fest. It just, it hasn't been fun relearning my class at level cap. One thing I thought I might do is go and level a new Druid, but that eats up my time from my main Druid. I already have a Druid, so why level a new one up? We'll see, though. Um, the Zandalari Heroics are those new heroics that were added in 4.1 and tell more troll story. Well, I think we're probably done with troll story until next expansion, but it's interesting to at least have this hint of troll story and hopefully I'll actually go in and see it. We'll just have to wait and see. After Dire Brew, I'm probably going to go back to the Firelands, or after Brewfest, and maybe actually try to figure out how to heal a five-man in a heroic. Because once I have all the Firelands gear, I'm going to be pretty well off eye-level-wise. All right, World of Warcraft, more. 4.3, you can impeach your guildmaster. That's right. Guildmaster leaves or goes AFK pretty seriously from the game. You can now impeach them as of 4.3. Not sure what the process entails at all, but you'll be able to regain some semblance of guild mastery within your guild if your guildmaster is left. So those of you with alts hiding out in less busy guilds at this point, look into it. Look at those stats of last played, etc. See if you're in a rank high enough because from what's been released so far you need to be in, you know, that second command rank or the officer rank depending on how ranks have been set up in your guild. 
I really regret now having one of my characters leaving the first guild I was in in WoW. Because those individuals have moved on, possibly from the game. I know from the server. And I'd then be able to hold and control my first guild. Maybe only use it as a bank, but at least it would be part of me again. Couldn't even find it on the armory anymore. So it doesn't have any active members, which is sad to just know that that guild is permanently retired. So goodbye, Diabolic Logic. Transmogrification. I already mentioned this a little bit. Yes, it's been covered on other sites. Yes, it's been covered in other places. But it is now officially in patch notes. Remember the box of World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King? It mentioned dance studios were coming to the game. They still haven't come to the game. So until it's in patch notes, it's just an idea on a developer's plate. Transmogrification, void storage. These are when you get to swap gear, swap how the gear looks, store the gear in an overly priced extra bank. Reforging is going to get a tune-up. This is where you swap one stat on an item for another. So maybe you need some hit. The piece that you have doesn't have any hit. You can take spirit, Sam a mage, and put it into hit. You have enough hit, move it to crit. You have enough of that and you find yourself running out of mana at this point, move it back to spirit, revert it. Ref reforging gives you a way of giving you tweaks to your gear. It's not new, but it itself is getting tweaked, so I thought I'd mention it. For instance, the old NPCs, you won't be able to find them in it 4.3. They're moving to probably where the void storage and transmogrification person people are, or ethereals are. So watch out for that if you want to go and reforge something brand new from those five-man dungeons. I'm really looking forward to these things. It's one of the reasons why I want to go and gear up more, because I want to be capable of entering these brand new five-man dungeons that are coming in 4.3. They tell more story. I love the World of Warcraft story, the lore, the characters, the building of the characters, and the idea that something out there is more powerful than Deathwing and you can just kind of chuck them onto uh, the Wormrest Temple, that's a pretty bone-chilling idea. Other just kind of housekeeping 4.3 stuff that really does benefit an al alcoholic like me. 71 to 80 XP reduced. So you will get to 80 faster now. You will get to that Kata content faster now. Northrend and Outland quests that have formerly been marked group are getting downgraded. They did this in vanilla quite a while ago. Then Cataclysm happened and all of the quests were retuned. But now Northrend and all of those crazy Dragon Blight group quests are going to be solo quests, more than likely. Those somewhat annoying group quests in random locations in Burning Crusade, that one I'm actually more sad about because I enjoyed in Hellfire Peninsula calling out in general chat, who's up to kill Overlord? Everybody did the Overlord quest. It's just, it was something you did as you leveled up. And it's unfortunate, slightly, you know, the nostalgia's kicking in. Unfortunate that it won't be there anymore. At least how it was. I remember leveling my Warlock. My Voidwalker tanked it. My Voidwalker tanked it for myself and a Paladin. Sun and I, group 
joined a five three man team becoming a five man team against this thing I healed as my shaman Sun quasi tanked somebody else I think tanked more of who just pulled more DPS but he charged in he gave it his all he helped kick its butt and that was the fun of it finally Burning Crusade and Northrend quest givers are moving. Or the quests are moving. They're going to be inside the related dungeons. So no more as you're leveling up from 1 to 60 and queuing for dungeons. The first time you get to a dungeon, you can go and you can find your little quest giver. And then at 60, it stops. Burning Crusade, it it stops. You're standing in Hellfire Citadel going, where's my quest giver? You won't have to say that anymore. You won't have to say that anymore when you're standing in the Nexus, scratching your head and wondering, why are all these trees here? And why are they so sparkly? You'll understand a little bit more. You'll probably get a little bit more of that lore for new players. For the old ones, you know. You know why. You know why you're killing a red dragon. Hopefully. Hopefully you did the quests around there. Koldara, that's a great little quest zone. Some of them are annoying, but for the most part, it's a straight shot. It's a small area. You're running around in the small area. And you're ticking Malagos off. What's not fun about that? But the quest givers move. So it's going to be a seamless transition from 1 to 85 where you can find the quest giver right inside the portal. Smart move, Blizzard. Very smart move. Holy crap, there's a lot. Staying in the gaming vein, Rift, if you're interested in Rift, it's very tempting to pick up Rift for 8 bucks. Yes, it's a subscription one month thing, but you get one month quote unquote free, more air quotes, yay, by buying Rift from Steam, and you get it for eight bucks. So if you're interested, if you're sick and tired of World of Warcraft and me talking about it, go get Rift. Heck, go grab me a copy of Rift. Only kidding. And uh, try it out. An MMO is a good style of game and picking it up for the cheap giving it a try sounds good to me I know I'm gonna try DC Universe online when it goes free to play I'm not gonna feel bad about War Warcraft at all I'm gonna give it a shot I'm gonna see who knows maybe it'll end up saving me a lot of money month to month if everybody loves it I know it won't but it could other gaming news Go grab your DSi, go grab your 3DS, and go download Zelda Four Swords Adventure. It is now free to download on both of those shops on the portable networks. Haven't grabbed mine yet. I actually uh, probably plan to do that once I log out and start downloading this podcast for editing purposes. But... It's something to do. It's something free to grab. And from what I've heard of that game, it was fun. And it's multiplayer. I think even wireless multiplayer. So I'm looking forward to it. Quite a bit. Finally, in gaming world, in MMO news, EA Origin is going to be required if you're interested in the Star Wars MMO coming up. EA Origin is kind of like Steam. It's EA's own bloatware version of Steam. You know, they can make all of their downloadable content chargeable in-game and not tick off Steam's license agreement. Well, I'm not interested. I was slightly interested in Star Wars. I am no longer interested. And I hate saying that, but I am not installing EA Origins. Maybe I'm taking too hard of a line on this, but 
that's me and that's going to be my choice wow is filling that mmo void for me anyway so i'm sorry friends but you won't find me in swokator or however the uh swokator s w k o t r good luck paring that down to something easy that's why wow wins no not really but Foo Fighters are also going to be playing at BlizzCon, by the way. I'm uh, embarrassed to say I'm kind of scratching my head going, who? Who is the Foo? Oddly, I think Red Flare has a CD of them that I have since copied over into the computer, so I may have to listen to that particular CD and see what they have. I hope that the Skin and Bones album of Foo Fighters does them justice because that's what I have iPhone 5 is on its way yes it's on its way that's about all I have on the subject it's on its way there's going to be a press conference press release regarding it sometime soon oh that's right sorry one more gaming piece that Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic the release date was finally launched this la announced this last week, December 20th, just in time for Christmas and Christmas vacation, so you can go level your tunes while you're watching the kids open presents. Hopefully you're not doing that. Watch the kids. Join them. Later play that. Or play WoW with them and enjoy Wintervale. <laughs> anyway back to Apple uh, OS X.7 Lion you can hack the passwords an Australian um, noticed this vulnerability one thing don't leave your computer lying around there's some kind I didn't look at the technical details about it because that's not what this podcast is about but Apple isn't as safe as the fanatics would have you believe and it's things like this that proves that point. OS X, Windows, they're programmed by humans. Humans are make mistakes. So, of course, there are going to be holes, security holes. And as Apple becomes more popular, as OS X becomes more popular, more people are going to be finding those holes and falling in them. I certainly know I would probably would fall into a few. The darn kitchen floor is extra slippery. The kids used lotion and uh, didn't clean up properly. So that's been an interesting and exciting uh, sliding time. Wow. The Tokyo Game Show ended last week after this podcast. One thing uh, of note from there that hasn't been mentioned too much anywhere else are mind reading cat ears yeah i mean they could be in any kind of form but we have the tech now so that this is the advantage of watching on youtube or ustream i suppose i'm making an absolute fool of myself with my hands but the cat ears read how much concentration you have and twitch accordingly they go slightly limp and roll in when you're not really paying attention to anything and they stand up nice and straight and tall when you are. So that's scary. Be something very interesting for a totalitarian regime in, say, school. Oh, wait, schools usually are. But <clears throat> anyway, it's both scary and neat at the same time. There's tech about this, like from uh, Final Fantasy Spirits Within, that old movie. Recording your dreams would be really neat to be able to do. Or scary for some. Or both. Sometimes creepy, probably. But it'd be neat to do. And it's tech like this, slowly evolving, that says it's going to someday be possible, probably. Which is cool. And scary. Both. Anyway. Netflix and DreamWorks. I like Netflix. We use Netflix. 
We're probably going to stay with Quickster because so far we haven't found decent alternative services. Netflix and DreamWorks have signed an agreement. An exclusivity. Exclusivi it's too late for me to pronounce big words. Netflix has full rights, first come, first serve to DreamWorks animation films. They're pl paying big bucks for the films, if I understand it right, but they're going to be streaming. They're going to be streaming DreamWorks, which is a pretty big content library when you look at, say, Shrek, Madagascar, and I'm naming off kids' movies because I think that's all they're doing. Probably. Shrek and Madagascar are a couple of the uh, family favorites for DreamWorks, so it'll be neat to be able to let uh, the toddler stream those on the iPad without any difficulty. Oh, there are my notebook notes. Kindle Fire. The Kindle Touch, the Kindle Fire, it's been announced. Kindle is really, really making waves. It's an Android-powered device, and it's 200 bucks. It's a tablet. Me, I'm an Apple user. That's where most of our stuff is. Android, it's okay. It's another mobile OS. I have no yay or nay about one way or the other. I use both. Android is on my phone. iOS is, well, obviously on my iPad. Um, oddly, I'm more interested in getting things on the iPad than on the Android, most likely because of the screen size differences. My phone's my phone. It also doubles as a PDA for calendar, voice recording, weather checking, Twitter watching, but that's about it on my phone. I use it as a GPS too, that's right, as a camera in a pinch. But I don't take full advantage of what a smartphone has to offer. If I hadn't been forced off of my ancient danger sidekick, I probably would still be using that. I use them for very specific things, and that's it. But these Kindle price cuts are amazing. 200 bucks for a tablet. That will hopefully make everyone else take notice and everyone adjust accordingly. Or differentiate themselves so much that they can actually justify asking for so much money. Me... We paid a decent amount for our iPad, but we also paid for the largest storage capacity iPad. So there's reason to spend a little extra money. I don't know what the $200 Kindle has as far as storage capacity goes. But they're relaunching the Kindle line, and it's as cheap as 80 bucks now. $80. Me, I won't be getting one because unless... Unless it's a comic book, I like to be physically holding my book, turning those pages. Yes, I'm ancient in that way. Maybe one day I'll change my mind. But right now, that's how I like it. To not have to depend on technology for one thing is a good thing. Other unique pieces of news. And wow, I'm over. I apologize, but almost through. Healthcare law appealed in, to the Supreme Court. That's about it. They, uh, Obama administration earlier this week is taking it from the full U.S. Appeals Court for the 11th Circuit to go to a three-judge panel, and they're appealing it to the Supreme Court. If you're interested in law, if you're interested in constitutional law, this is interesting stuff. I'm not saying yay or nay or wahoo or boo. It's just interesting that the health care law is going to the Supreme Court, as everybody, for the most part, predicted it would. Finally, just a friendly reminder Go clean out your Facebook. 
Red Flare did it recently. I've um, practiced, have always practiced the rule of if you're not going to be comfortable posting it on a billboard of a highly trafficked highway, don't post it to Facebook. That's why I don't post about work on my social networking or this podcast or my blog. I'm not comfortable doing so. My family depends on me. Having a bad day, everybody does that. So complaining about that bad day in a public forum that could possibly come back and bite you at a later date is, I apologize, stupid. Keep it to your spouse. Keep it to somebody else you trust to converse about it and vent about it there. But don't post it to Facebook. Don't post it to Twitter. It will come back to bite you. A lot of stuff is changing on Facebook recently. If you're interested, go back and check it out. Or if you are familiar with it, you are probably still gnashing your teeth. I know I am. I'm highly tempted to leave Facebook at this point. We'll just wait and see. I'm in a wait and see holding pattern because hopefully it's just a new implementation and they have simply screwed up. But I hate seeing all of my likes and whatnot over in that right bar and knowing it's going out to everybody else too. That bugs me. Anyway, podcast at flameflash.net is the email if you want to send feedback. Leave a comment on this article too on wherever I post it, which is in iTunes and YouTube. I have two blogs posting this, mostly because iTunes likes a cleaner RSS feed than iWeb allows. But the flameflash.net version is the pivot alert version and the one you should be going to to make a comment if you want. Or you're welcome to make it on YouTube. I've seen some of those comments, I've seen some of that feedback, and I greatly appreciate it. So, until next week, thanks for sticking around a little bit longer than usual, and this is Flame Flash, signing off.